You see there's barbs here? And then all these are here. Like you kind of wouldn't want to rub it into your gum or something like that, so you want to take those off. We've never lost our connection with the ocean. We've never lost our connection with these shells. We use them today, but we don't do this to them. And so we don't etch the shells. And we don't etch these shells because that's an art form that's been lost. But within our communities, we still understand that that's something that we did. It's something that other people are trying to learn still. And so, most archaeologists consider it a dead art form because it's not practiced in the same manner that it was 1,400 years ago. But we never forgot it. When I was about 14, we went to the Smithsonian with our Boy Scout crew out here in, um, in Salt River. And there was actually um, the display in the, I think it's the Museum of Natural History. Um, and it had the Altham Salt Flats in there and then it had a bunch of like, um, like Holcomb and tools and Holcomb pottery and they talked about shell etching. So ever since then, I just was really kind of interested in figuring out exactly how it was done because there's all these theories out there but no one really applied it. So a lot of it was just researching archaeologists like reports, um, just different books on our people and on our ancestors, and then putting it together and actually trying to apply some of what was being spoken of, and then seeing if what was theory was actually applicable to the art. So this is freaking huge. <laughs> and you can see like right in here where it was, it was all notched out, almost like how he does the flint napper. You can see in here it was all cracked out and then ground down. It's really cool. I've never seen anything like it. I get a kick out of just holding a piece of pottery that has a fingerprint on the inside. Just being in that in in that setting was just uh it was kind of uh, overwhelming. My grandmother used to take us to museums a long time ago go to other, um, uh, we used to go to Hill River and go to a lot of the art, little art exhi exhibits they used to have a long time ago. And so I kind of grew up with dance and song since I was young. I'm the first of my family, of my uh, brother and two sisters to return to the community and to actively try to contribute to the community at the same time though learning as much as I can. I was never really raised in a traditional home. I didn't know anything traditional until recently I started um, running for the Miss Salt River pageant and at first it was just something that I was doing just to get ready because I know that for the pageant that people were going to ask questions about traditional things and I didn't know any of them. And then as I told me to um, start to go like this, like, go like this, to get it more all even. There's so many people out there, and I think they're really interested in the shell etching, and it's, it is a dying art, so nobody, there was no knowledge. We didn't know how to do it, you know? So um, I'm so glad you finally got to make a class and he said that he would contact me because I work at this school and I teach the children you know the things that I learn um, from the community um, I you know I bring it back to the classroom you know we're a rare breed of people and it's kind of hard to keep that alive especially with younger kids so um, if I can pass it on anyway you know possible I will and it's a lost art form. Like they, they said, no one in Tio, Akchin, Hill River is, you know, teaching this. And, and for him to do this, it's huge. There's not very many places you can go to get this information. So the work that he's put into it, I think, is, is a big thing because he's just like one thread that's holding that history together. What we're learning here is something that's sacred and something that, you know, is very important. It's something that's not taken carelessly. And, um, 
treat with respect. And uh, you know, I hope all of us are able to, to learn something and, and take this further than Jacob ever intended, which he takes, he plans to, for us to take it very far. So hopefully, you know, this is something that we'll take to heart and understand that, you know, it's very important. And, and no one does this anymore. And um, I think it's a blessing in itself to be here today. I feel really blessed to be here yeah, with good, the people that are here, you know, because they're here. They're genuinely here to, to learn, and it just makes me feel really good. And it's a lot of young people. And I'm probably one of the older ones, and um, I just feel like, wow, I, you know, these, these are young people that want to learn. And it, it just really, I don't know if it's an aha moment, but it's, it makes you feel good. It makes my heart feel good. Being educated about my history and people, um, I think is very important because I don't want to be just, just anybody, you know. This is something that was taught long before me and belongs to everybody. And so um, for me, I'm just trying to share as much as I can to help perpetuate what I know so that if anybody else wants to pick this up and, and express themselves in it, then they're welcome to. I'm still learning and hopefully I taught you something that, that you can continue if you have any more questions, I welcome you to come find me. I'm willing to share whatever else I know. And then as I learn, I'm hopefully will wanting to put on another class to show you other ways and more refined techniques. And so I thank you guys all for coming. It really means a lot to me. And hopefully your shells on, uh, in this exhibit will mean a lot to you. And so in November, you'll get to give them back. And uh, I know it's a tradition with um, basket makers and potters that you give your first shell to the person that taught you. So I'm expecting all of those back. <laughs> yeah, no, I was kidding.